It's Alex here, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the next in the series of What the Frock. This time I'm on vintage dress patterns and I don't have so many of those so we'll be a lot quicker. Um, before we move on to that, just wanted to say thank you very much for all the lovely comments on my last video and I seem to have got lots of new subscribers so big welcome to all of those new people. Um, Please join in. I mean, actually, the last video was a really good example of how brilliant the sewing community is because uh, I mentioned both Laura, Specky Seamstress, and Lucy, who has a blog, Love Lucy, um, in that video. And then, coincidentally, I also mentioned that I was struggling with how to deal with those uh, cuffs on my Melio shirt that was sort of slightly poking up. And they both came on and said they'd managed to resolve that problem. Actually, it was Laura managed to resolve it, and then Lucy made one using Laura's method. So, you know, everyone's helping everyone out, which is fabulous, and I love that. So, um, yeah, keep all the comments coming, and if you're new, please feel free to join in. It's great, and I really love that part of this video malarkey. One last thing just before we head over to Trello, uh, this is a Cali shirt dress that I made, you have seen it, um, it's the one that I've colour blocked in this fabulous tensile fabric um, from Lulu Designs, who by the way have a 20% sale on at the moment, so um, yeah sorry if I've enabled you but they do have some lovely fabrics over there. Um, but yeah, this I made as part of the Great Module So Along, was it called? Um, and I have been finding myself wearing this a lot and doing exactly what I thought I might do, which is sometimes I wear it unbuttoned, more like a sort of lightweight jackety thing. Uh, and sometimes today I'm wearing it over, in fact, the chinos I made as part of the same module. Anyway, I'll do a thingy, so if you want to see any more of that. So. Uh, I'll head over to Trello and we'll go from there. So we're back here on Trello and we're focusing on this section here which is the dresses. So we're starting off with Butterick 5920 which I'm fairly sure is still very much around. Um, it's a reissued retro pattern in 1951 it says and I absolutely love it. Um, what I'm drawn to, I mean, they always have such gorgeous illustrations, don't they? Um, sadly, you don't get the figure that goes underneath it with the pattern. It's very much a pattern that would look just as good now here in 2020 as it would have done in 1951. I think it's still a very contemporary neckline, this. And I think it's really nice. I love the button up front, but if you'll notice, I think it's clearer on the line drawing. It only goes to here, which is a feature I'd kind of be interested to see how that all works. I really like that. Not so convinced by the tulip shape, pockets but you know pockets can be adapted pretty easily and then obviously it comes with a sleeve and a sleeveless version um, and you know this nice full skirt. If we look at the line drawing it looks like for once they actually have a relatively inclusive sizing there. Yes obviously this is designed for a woven but look it also comes with a slip to wear under it so I guess you could do a um, translucent or transparent fabric and wear the slip underneath. I'm fairly sure that is designed to be cut on the bias. Yes, so that in itself is actually quite a nice little pattern. You could certainly have that as a dress or as, um, you know, nightgown, nightgown, nighty. Um, so yeah, I really like this one. I just particularly, as I say, love that collar. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. It got darts at the back as well. Yeah, it has. And that's quite interesting because you don't often see darts on that shoulder anymore. And yet we do quite often need them. So definitely one to make. And then we have this Vogue pattern here. This is one I bought relatively recently but on eBay so I'm fairly sure that it's out of print now. Um, it's obviously one they reissued at some point. I was supposed to be going to a black tie event with my husband, a, a work awards do thing. It got cancelled because of coronavirus but I had planned to make this because I think that this dress is absolutely glorious. Um, look at it, it's got those little cap sleeves and look at these darts here, you've got this one here and this one here coming up from the side and then into the boobs and then it's got this lovely flat front 
but then look at the back has I'm not sure if those are pleats or gathers at the back there so I just thought it was a really unusual design and then also it has this at the back here it's like a sort of reverse collar I guess um, I have looked on Instagram at um, some that have been made there are one or two there um, some people have done it in a contrast I think I would have done it all in the same um, fabric in fact I'd already bought the fabric I've got some um, very deep green crepe from Croft Mill which I was going to make it out of so I really love that dress and then I did think actually I could make the jacket too it's not lined and it's got this peplum with these gathers that are sewn into it um, obviously very fitted and again that same side dart there and again little gathers on the three-quarter sleeve I just think that that is really really gorgeous outfit I absolutely love that and I'm kind of almost looking for an excuse to make it again this one here is obviously pretty out of date um, but I still think again there's nothing wrong with that and um, obviously those um, waistbands the belts were slightly dropped so that must have been a thing that was a trend at the time that came out but again not a big deal to sort that out in fact I'm not sure I'd even have a belt but um, yeah you know you've got the collarless just a round neck version with this placket at the front here and then this version here so it looks like it's a convertible collar so it looks like a standard collar when it's buttoned up and a notched collar when it's opened um yeah i think it's really nice you've got the darts there at the um waist so it's giving it a bit of shape let's see if we can see the line drawing at all sleeve options this one i adore i think it came to me ripped at the front there and i can't remember for the life of me where i bought it probably ebay but look at that i mean that is absolutely gorgeous dress there i love the sleeves i love this whole detail here with the collar i mean I don't know why I haven't made it actually now I'm looking at it it's really inspiring me to make it and I'll show you at the end there was a, a little um, image tucked inside the pattern envelope of what looks like an ad for it I'll show you that later but yeah how lovely is that yeah there's the reverse fit whoever had it in a previous life has obviously circled what they needed here oh I mean look at those illustrations aren't they lovely I think I'll buy them as much for the illustrations as I do for the pattern itself um yeah so a Leroy and then on to this one so now we're heading to the 1970s <laughs> I mean look it's amazing um and again I am sure I see patterns like that that are released now I mean it's a caftan it's tunic style I mean different lengths it's a fairly simple little basic pattern there it's got the bust darts look at it isn't it absolutely amazing I did um, make a version of this a couple of years ago when the sewing bee had their 70s week there was an Instagram challenge and I did make it but I found that I didn't really wear it so I ended up cutting it down and just making it into a maxi skirt which I wear much more fabulous so then on to this little number obviously this one's out of print it's nightwear because you know you've got to have your Brigitte Bardot nighty haven't you <laughs> um yeah it comes in two lengths uh these ones obviously have a, a tie or a band underneath the bust there but yeah look at this and again you know i'd make that i say that i haven't made it but i would make it it's brilliant and i'm fairly sure i bought that in a charity shop this one another shirt dress as we know bit of a favorite it's a bit battered this one but yeah look how fabulous that is it's another one with the convertible collar so with this curved edge here kind of petal like not sure that really it's me the collar or the shaping there but um the dress is gorgeous isn't it you know with these pockets here with the same shape reflected 
and the darts and the, the buttons all the way through. And I love this little detail here on the sleeve. Obviously two sleeve lengths on that one. I know I bought this one on eBay. Look, it's somebody's obviously checked off that all the pattern pieces are in there. And then this is obviously another reissued one. I'm fairly sure it's still in print from Butterick. I'm not 100% sure whether it's supposed to be some sort of uber glamorous um, dressing gown or a dress, but you know that means it could be either couldn't it think again that's absolutely gorgeous if you made it a, a shorter length and had it with the short sleeves it's not going to look so much like an evening dress but look again look at those lovely sleeves and i love this waist belt here with the kind of draping effect and that seems to be coming from the belt rather than the dress itself you know gathers at the bust there i mean it's gorgeous and looks very contemporary to me i can see why they've reissued it and yet yeah, it looks fab as a maxi but you could make that pretty much any length you wanted if that was issued as a kind of deer and doe or a by, by hand london you wouldn't be surprised at all would you love that one this one i think was a freebie that came with one of the sewing magazines and i think that's a really useful pattern to have i can't remember is whether that's a jersey a stretch or a woven i'll have a look at the details in a minute i would probably go for this version rather than the full skirt that's only because i think i'd find it more wearable um but look at that i love that neckline that whole one piece sort of dolman top there i mean that is absolutely brilliant it's very possibly still in print crepe or wool jersey okay so either that is brilliant interesting isn't it that these illustrations look a bit more ordinary than the one on the top a lot of that is to do with the shape of these ladies on the front here but nonetheless it's still a fab pattern and this one I bought in a charity shop. I think it cost me 50p. At the time, JJ, the Camden Stitch, was doing a series about affordable um, sewing, which I'll link below because it's really, really good. Um, and she had a challenge. Not sure if it was buying affordable patterns or vintage patterns. Anyway, I didn't end up making it, but I bought this. I kind of feel like it could be truly wonderful or it could be a big no-no. Not sure. But um, for what it cost me it was definitely worth having and then this one from Leroy which is my last one and I'm pleased I managed to get it in a good size for me um, I'm not sure where I bought this from I just love the illustration the whole design is what did it for me really on this one uh, I love the wrap uh, obviously two sleeve lengths but it's all of these sun ray darts coming out here both on the bodice and from the waist here out across the skirt i just think that could be absolutely amazing you've just got to have the right event to go to it's the sort of cocktail dress isn't it and who goes to cocktail parties these days so yeah i'm going to show you in a sec the pattern pieces for this one i love it i'm really really pleased i bought it but yeah that's it not too many vintage dresses so it was as promised, short and sweet. I don't have that many um, vintage patterns and I don't know why I've not been using them. I've kind of, kind of inspired myself really by going through them, which is, you know, something I'd recommend doing. If you've got a pattern stash, go through it because you find things that you you bought for a reason and then they just sort of sit there gathering dust. So I've kind of inspired myself. I'm definitely going to make this one, this Vogue pattern. I think I'm going to put that quite high up the list of things to make. Um, I think when I bought this, that it came with this section here cut off, who knows. Um, but I, one of the things I like about buying these sort of true vintage patterns, not the, the re-released ones, but the ones that really have been owned by somebody way back from, I mean, that's got to be 60s, isn't it? Um, is that kind of experience of having a pattern in your hands that someone else has bought at some point and someone else has loved. And in the case of this one, tucked inside it was this, which is... Um, an image of it made up so it must have come from a magazine I don't know whether it would have been the pattern magazine hopefully the camera's focused on that um, but it's a proper image of or a photograph of the dress made up with a little description here um, look how carefully somebody's cut that out that's the kind of stuff I don't know I get a thrill out of that 
um, with a little description of what kind of fabric it's made up in. Uh, it says it breaks new grounds and retains its clean limbed line, because that's what we all want is a clean limbed line. Uh, adds win for winter cuffed sleeves and a standoffish collar and that it's made in wool flannel from Dickens and Jones. And if you're not in the UK or you don't know, Dickens and Jones was, possibly still is, a department store in central London. It's kind of just across the road from Liberty, actually. And um, I used to go there in my lunch hour when I was working in London. So I don't know, I kind of enjoyed the fact it had Dickens and Jones in it as well. Um, but the one thing with these vintage patterns is uh, that the pattern pieces are not like the pattern pieces we're used to seeing now. Um, in fact, I'll show you the Leroy one, that's probably better. Um, but if you want to pick them up, eBay is a good place. Sometimes I just, if I'm a bit bored actually, I just go and have a quick look on eBay and see what's around. I type in vintage sewing patterns and then I select um, ending soonest uh, because that's quite often when you get a bit of a bargain. Um, so sometimes I've literally just been randomly sitting on my sofa uh, spotting things that I like the look of. And the other place that's quite good to look for them is Facebook. Sometimes there are Facebook groups, um, certainly there are in the UK, I'm sure there are across other countries. The thing with the Facebook groups is that people usually know what they're selling, so um, you kind of get some really nice ones but you'll probably pay a bit more for them. eBay is more likely to have um, cheaper ones that somebody's, you know, got from a relative or yeah, doing a house clearance. Um, so yes, this Leroy one um, is a fine example of what you get. So the instructions for this are literally this times two. Um, for me, I find that there's absolutely enough on here, having had a quick look at it, um, but then I'm used to birder instructions and stylock instructions. Um, but the pattern pieces themselves have very, very little on it and they tend not to be uh, multi-sized. So like this one is a size 18, which is a 38 bust. So in my case, I knew that those measurements, what is it, 38 bust, 30 waist, 40 hips, right. Well, actually my waist and hips are absolutely spot on there. So I know that that is going to be pretty similar, um, possibly a bit of drafting either size, either side, uh, and definitely I would make a toile. But what you get with the pattern pieces, I love the fact that this hasn't been opened for goodness knows how long. Sometimes they're cut, by the way, and somebody's used them, and sometimes they're not, but any listing should make mention of that. So you get this kind of thing. It just has a load of holes punched in it. Hopefully you can see that. And then the pattern number, which is also punched in here. So you look at that and think, oh my goodness, what on earth? But in fact, in the case of this one, you kind of have more clarity on the um, layout. So I'll show you that. So you can see on the layout, the grain lines and the darts and um, any other important lines like that are all on there. In this case, it's all the pleats. So, in fact, what I think I will do when I make this, well, I'm not going to make this one first, but I'm going to make the other one, but what I'll do is I'll trace it. So I'll trace it and then put all the markings on my traced copy. I'm not going to sully <laughs> this original tissue pattern, which is obviously fairly delicate and um, it just feels wrong to mess with it, really. Um, but yes, if you get the reissued ones that Vogue do and Butterick do, quite a lot of them reissue, um, like I showed you really on Trello, they will come with all the usual information and all the usual pattern markings. Uh, but they don't come with the same joyous experience of knowing that you've picked something up that somebody else once absolutely loved. Um, anyway, Hopefully I will get on and make that dress fairly soon and I'll be able to show you. In the meantime, I've sewn a few things this week, but they're all quite summery and it's now freezing cold. So, 
Uh, the weather forecast says the sun is going to come out in the next couple of days and as soon as it does I will take some photographs and I'll pop back and I'll show you what I've made. So hopefully that won't be too long. Fingers crossed for some sun. Uh, and until then what I'm going to be doing is, you probably see I've got some fabric here ready to go. I have an absolute hankering to make a shirt for my husband. Um, it's been a long time since I've made him a shirt and he like me, you know, we've been on a bit of a health kick this year, so uh, his shape has changed quite a bit. So um, yeah, that's a kind of nice meaty one to get my teeth into, because I'll probably have to do a bit of tweaking here and there. So that's what I'm gonna do until the sun decides to pop up. Um, please look after yourselves and I will see you very soon. Thank you everyone for subscribing and supporting me. I really appreciate it. Bye bye.